I'd, I'd like to thank um, the married couple for an amazing meal. Uh, uh, it was absolutely delicious, and the parents of Andy, it was gorgeous, absolutely lovely. Really enjoyed that. Uh, round of applause for that one as well. I'd also like to thank the youngsters uh, this morning. That was, that was me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, the choir, the choir are absolutely amazing, and the musicians, that was me again. Yeah. Jesus. And uh, especially the wedding party, that was absolutely classic. Jesus, that was me again. Jesus, I really am the best, oh my god. And it was really, really great. And the staff here today were very, very, very welcoming. Yeah. And thanks very much for that. Yeah, thank you very much. And this is the, the, the short space of time where the limelight shifts slightly to, to the groom. It's mainly about the bride today. She gets to walk down the aisle, all that kind of stuff. You don't see the, you don't see the man walk down the aisle, you? you just want to get strung of stuff. Especially in the James Bond. He looks great, doesn't he? <laughs> well, I've just a little bit about weeds today, you know, and I have to get to that. Uh, I have a real problem with calling him Stephen, because I've never, ever called him Stephen. He's gone through so many names, and I know Cathy's side of the family likes to call him Stevie, is that right? Stevie? Well, we've had a few in the family. We've had a Stevie B, then we, we've had that. Stevie B. Oh, that's dear, dear. That's Stevie B. We've had uh, Schmeeks, Schmeeken, uh, Beetle, because he loves the Beatles. We've kind of landed on that one for a while. Call him Beats at the moment. Uh, when he got the camera, we called him Steven Bielberg. Uh, that was his camera days. Uh, but mainly Beats, or Beetle, that was the one we went with for a while. Uh, my, my kind of earliest memories of Steven were uh, when we were very young uh, in the Commando Club. Now that wasn't a club where people lived in their boxes. This was an actual tough, hardcore club. Uh, we just finished watching the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Commando. I don't know if you remember that one back in the 80s. And all we do is you go up to the green, we play with our toy guns, make huts, I don't you remember this. And there was only one rule. The only rule was that you couldn't go home if you wanted to go to the toilet. You had to just go up there. That was the only rule that we had. We had great banter up there, making huts and swings and all sorts of things. And at the time, Stephen was courting the next door neighbour. He didn't, he didn't venture very far. Uh, Laura. Laura Murphy was his first date. Um, and I don't know if you know, in those days, um, when you're going out with somebody, all it meant was just say, all right, in the morning. That was the only way you knew you were going out with somebody was, all right, in the morning. There was nothing else to it. It was only when you really went to a disco or the street party that you actually had to dance with somebody and do a slow dance. And I think myself and Stephen will remember the Knockline Disco vividly for the rest of our lives as we were collected by George in his dressing gown and slippers. We came into the disco, Stephen, Jonathan, there we were, absolutely mortified, dancing away with his dressing gown and slippers. Only George would do that. Only George. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Um, and also around that time, myself and Stephen, we, we were very influenced in music uh, from Stephanie and George, they handed it down to us. We started forming a few bands. The first band, I don't know if you remember the name of the first band, it was actually called Shatterproof. Uh, but we finally landed on the name uh, TLB, which, which stood for the Laser Boys. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a great name. Um, I was the lead singer with Neil. Uh, we had a couple, he was doing backing. We had Jim, who, who couldn't, couldn't make it here. He's actually in London. Uh, he was on drums. And uh, Beats, or Beatle, was our killer keys man. And it was actually uh, two chairs that held up the keyboard. Uh, <laughs> My dad, George, actually helped build a stage in the garden. Uh, we had no guitar player. We were like a young king. And uh, our first song was actually written by Jim's mum. And it was called Surfing in the Sea. And uh, I don't know if you'll remember this. When it was going to the square, to see is anybody there. Or go to the pizza hut, or drink some lemon and lime. I hope it tastes like slime. Like that. This is an actual gig, you know what I mean, in front of people. This is what we actually sang. We actually stole the tune from uh, Frankie and George, the crime busters of the sea. Do you remember that? It's one of the cartoons back in the day, after watching the DJ catch up. Um, and some of you might actually notice that Stephen is actually a singer-songwriter himself. And um, he's written many, many songs. And I have here the, one of the first lines of the first song he ever wrote. And it was entitled, In the Next Generation. I think he was going down the Bowie route, you know? <laughs> and the first line of the song, no word of a lie. In the next generation, people flying cars, children playing games, future technology has taken over this plant. It's a planet wrong. 
Honest to God, is that right? We laughed so much when he brought this into the band. I said my second year, the floor was dead sleepy. We were crying laughing, absolutely mental. So after uh, selling out a few estates and uh, touring a few gardens, um, we finally decided to take time to, for our families and uh, just to, to take time out of the band. We actually formed an underground rap group called JJSN. And <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, we used to sell uh, popcorn in the gigs. My mom used to make popcorn, two pence into a gig. But with JJSN, we actually never, ever played a gig. Um, our very first song was actually a song about cocaine. Uh, we don't want to tell the cops because he's got a gang to push us around and make us take cocaine. Chemicals <laughs> breaks your brain and makes you go insane. Insane in the midbrain. <laughs> insane in the brain. But uh, there were some financial difficulties and we had a, a real issue with the tour manager, so we never actually played a gig. Um, but Stephen, Stephen as, as we know, is named Beatle. He's got some very well respected influences like Bob Dylan. Uh, he likes Metallica, some bit of Bjork in there, obviously the Beatles. But funny enough, the first CD he ever bought was actually Spice Girls, will you be there? <laughs> no word of a lie. Um, and also, Patty, if I can give you some word of advice. Um, he's an early riser on the weekends, so I get the earplugs in. Because he whips the guitar out around 9 o'clock. Am I wrong, dear? Am I wrong? 9am, guitar, bang. On a Saturday. Come on, Jesus. Uh, Stephen's a well-educated man, uh, he's been through school, although he did repeat sixth class. So, <laughs> um, and a lot of people have referenced a lot of his um, college degrees that he's doing at the moment. Nobody has spoke about his first uh, attempt at college, which was a culinary arts degree in Colin Brew Street. Um, money well spent, I believe, as every Christmas he would tell our grandmother the rasher story. Now, <laughs> that was the one thing he took from college, um, and he would tell us all the time, and we, we, don't, we never forget this story, except our 